Good everybody, welcome to Campola Road. I've just been fiddling with one of these, it's a Vitrains Class 37, a relatively new purchase. So I thought I'd just do a quick video giving a look-see or overview of these much maligned locomotives, or models of locomotives. So as you probably all know, the Vitrains was a copy of the Lima uh, 37, so why am I doing this? Well, there's been a stalwart on my layout for a long time. I jumped on the bandwagon when they first came out back in the mid-2000s. Um, they were £39 or something when your Backman equivalent was about 50 um, And they came with the centre-mounted motor, gearbox at either end, and relatively good detail. As you can see, so the pros and cons were fast apparent uh, when you opened your first Vitrains Class 37. When you opened the box it was soon apparent there were problems. Now the boxes were very good and I'll just quickly show you. For those who liked the boxes, that's it and it was very good in its day. Much better than the opposition's boxes. Very hard, had a foam insert, but the foam wasn't hard enough, uh, which has caused an awful lot of damage in transit. All right, so why do I like them so much? Well, I'll start with the negatives, then the positives. They did come with a multitude of sins, and this was the first release, and you can hear it's got a bit of a grindy gearbox. I'll stop it there. Um, this is David Lloyd George, and I received this 2006, I think, um, here in Kampala it arrived. And um, the reason I got it was, it was a locomotive that appeared to be good value for money, given its centrally mounted motor, when you were looking at 50 or 60 pounds, you know, 13, 14 years ago for a Backman. Um, coming in sub 40 pounds was amazing. Um, so where do I start? Okay, well, um, remembering this is the very first release, and they learned a lot of lessons. So the first thing that was noticeable was the horns broke off straight away. Um, the nose came off and fell off basically. Um, inside the nose are the light lenses to refract the light, especially for the red light at the back. They fell off. The glazing fell out. Um, and I could go on a little bit. The uh, buffers droop. Um, what else was there? Uh, the glazing on the sides fell out. It was generally, oh, and it was a light bleed, a lot of light bleed through this. So it wasn't an auspicious start, and I think that sort of uh, ended them before they even got going, really, because they didn't last very long. The positives um, were they are superb runners. The motor they put in. Uh, and the simplicity of them makes them very easy to service, apart from the pickups, which are a little bit dodgy. So once you've fixed all, all those sort of issues, uh, they're okay. Um, now, I was a member of RM Web back in 2006, um, before it closed down, because it got somewhat vitriolic, let's just put it like that. Um, I haven't joined back since, because it was a bit nasty place to be at the time. Uh, but this got absolutely um, roasted on the forums, including RM Web, and uh, some of it was justified, um, some of it wasn't. I think we're a bit kinder today. If you look at uh, Oxford Rail and their problems with the Adams Radial, um, they've been given a second and third chance with other locomotives. The fire trains were absolutely, you know, put on the cross and crucified. The other problem with the Vitrains locomotive, they expected you to do a lot yourself. Um, that's because they were manufactured in Italy and not China, so I guess labour was more expensive. Though they moved on a lot of that labour cost to us, the modeler. So items like windscreen wipers, um, the horns later and the later models, um, on the Class 47, for example, even the door handles and the door rails, you have to glue on yourself lamp irons, all that sort of thing were passed on to the modeler to do. So 
If you can get through that and you want a reasonably well, or very, very good, sorry, running locomotive, then they're okay. Um, the other big criticism was their body shape was, while it was a lemur body, it was much better than the Hornby offering at the time. Yeah, Backman set a new standard back then, and this again came in for criticism that it wasn't quite up to the mark. This is what they look like when they come in the box. This is an unmolested version of the uh, large logo, Mary Queen of Scots, which uh, Backman has subsequently come out with recently, in the last 12 months or so, 18 months maybe. Um, but you can see again where it came in for criticism. They used the yellow plastic as the BR yellow, and it wasn't quite correct. If you don't like that sort of thing, then these were really not up to your grade. Um, again, um, you can adjust that. I think I've actually, talking about it now, um, Gary at Cheeky Tech has done one, modified it to appear in a better colour. I believe I'm correct there. Maybe worth having a look at his channel. So you can see the foam packaging. It wasn't quite good enough for transportation purposes. And the accessory pack was at the end, and there's a lot of accessories on these locomotives because you're expected to do a lot yourself. Now moving on from the first release, which was this, um, I'll show you a different coloured livery. I think there were over 35 different liveries that Vitrains did for this locomotive. And this is the mainline one, which I've never really used. But the printing, you can see the quality of the printing had increased to a much better standard by this time. Stop her there. Um, different, slightly different nose. Another criticism was the LEDs were very bright, but I think all manufacturers suffered from that back in those days. It was just good to have lights that you could switch on and off. So there is the body off. Um, as you can see, this is the, uh, I'm just sticking in a TTS chip. Um, I'm just wondering what to do with that speaker, whether I pack it with Bluetack or change it. Um, but it's extremely simple design and one that is very, very easy to maintain. You can see another criticism there on the right hand side, there was no cab detail. Um, so the, the, the model did come in for a lot of criticism on that, the cutting corners. My own personal bugbear with the Vitrains um, 37 is the buffer beam. It droops. And um, you can see there that it's drooping slightly. And all of my logos, I've got about eight or nine of them now, uh, all do reasonable work, or certainly the BR ones do. I have a BR Blue three in large logo, the mainline one you saw, and a couple of others, including this one, which is a Dutch liveried one. Um, I do like the 37s with the big round buffer on, uh, like the um, Beckman ones have. These look tiny, um, and they do droop, and that means also that at the other end, the coupling hook droops as well. Underneath that very simplistic looking PCB is a very, very nice five pole motor and it just sits in that metal cradle. This is metal, so it's heavy. It's about 500 grams, I think. I measured it years ago, weighed it years ago, it was about 500 grams. Um, but basically, they do the job and they can pull. Um, they do have traction tyres, though, the earlier make uh, releases. And uh, that's a problem again for some people. But on a positive note, um, I do feel if you fit snow ploughs, they look more like the real thing than the Backman ones do. Backman ones are completely oversized and look terrible in my view. Uh, right, so this is the interior of the current body I'm just about to put back on. Um, 
Yeah, these are very precious. Uh, <laughs> when I took the body off, sure enough, some of the glazing fell out and I had to re-stick it on. Now you could argue, well, it's getting old, it's getting on a bit, so the glue's gone brittle, but I can assure you, even when they were new, that happened. Uh, and this is the thing to watch for. This light refracting lens, they are absolutely woeful. The whole unit falls out. In fact, I'm surprised this one hasn't, along with that black uh, bracket there. Okay, well, I just wanted to um, sort of give an overview of the Vitrains. It's, it is or has a bad reputation. I think they're okay. And if you're looking for a bargain and a very, very good pulling locomotive, um, you can do a lot of work to these to improve them, weather them, just to hide that. Maybe the body shape is slightly wrong. Um, but, you know, £50 and less, you're getting yourself an extremely good model. But look out for new or unused. Um, I wouldn't go for the, the used ones too much because of the uh, potential damage that's already taken place. Okay. Speed step five, that is. Off she goes. Oops, sorry about that. I'm trying to do this holding the phone as well. Just stop her there. The LEDs came in for some criticism, as I said earlier. Most uh, manufacturers were in the same boat at that stage. Uh, the red lights were as good as useless. They never really worked at all on this loco, and there, you can't see them. In a very dark room, they are fairly dim. Okay, just a quick couple of running shots of her going around the layout. And what better way with a Dutch livery trucks, I reckon. So off she goes. Delivery is extremely bright. I've never seen a real one. I assume it's close. Off she goes. That speaker's a bit tinny. Okay, so a few quick shots of the Vitrains 37 uh, running around. So I hope this gives you a bit of an insight into um, these sort of locos. Only were on the market for less than five years, I think, and 
I picked up quite a few because the retailers getting rid of them. They had such a bad reputation. If you're a little bit handy with uh, super glue, <laughs> um, they're well worth it. I mean, if you can pick them up for 50 pounds, they are well, well worth it. They run beautifully, simple to maintain, as I've said, and uh, you can add to them. You've seen my example of where I've weathered it, um, and there are other examples out there where people have repainted them. Anyway, from Kampala Road, um, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for sticking by and uh, catch you very soon with the Christmas bloopers special. Cheers for now. <laughs>